We're going to look at direction and thrust by studying the skeleton. So our big question is, how do we show in the drawing the direction that different parts of the body are facing? For example, I have a knee that's facing towards me and I have another one that's facing over my shoulder. The face of the skeleton is facing over my shoulder, but the breastbone is facing me. So the main idea here is that we need to pick a landmark and put that in our drawing. There's specific kinds of landmarks that can, we can use to show which uh, direction something is aiming. Let's start off by looking at the rib cage here. So we're going to simplify it quite a bit and I'm going to depict it as if it was a kind of an egg-like shape. I'm going to now locate the center of the rib cage where the ribs come together. The breastbone is a great landmark. So the breastbone is right here. So I'm going to create this light and simple line. It's more of a directional line. I'm not outlining the breastbone. I'm just putting this mark to show the direction of the breastbone. And then I put a blue tape around the rib cage. I'm going to draw an ellipse, an oval, around the rib cage where that blue tape is located. So together, this directional line of the breastbone and this directional line and a lips wrapped around the rib cage can show us the angle and direction of the rib cage. Now I'm going to edit my drawing a little bit just to um, show that there's a front and a back. I'm going to lighten up this part of the ellipse. Now let's move on. So I have a spine coming down this way, continuing up here. The spine changes direction, so it can be quite a useful landmark that we can uh, employ in the drawing uh, to show the changes of direction. And now when we get up here, the region of the head, I'm going to simplify that as well. So I'm going to imagine a kind of a sphere up here. And then a part of a cylinder down here. So here's the cylinder. An ellipse over an ellipse. With its two sides. And here's the sphere. Now I'm going to simplify these. I'm going to take out a few of the lines to show the direction or thrust of the skull. I'm going to look at the nose, which goes this way, and I'm going to wrap an imaginary ellipse around the skull going through the region of the eyebrows. So this line here and this line here can help me to show the direction that the skull is facing. I can come back and refine this drawing a bit so that it looks more like what I actually see when I look at the skull, but that'll suffice for now. Let's go down and look at what's happening in the lower part of the figure. I'm going to also simplify the pelvis. Here's the top of the hips, the bottom of the pelvis. And then I have the legs, one coming this way. So I'm going to indicate the direction of the leg with a simple mark and this way for the lower leg. And here's where I put that blue tape, right on the kneecap. So it's facing me this way. So there's a simplified rendition of the leg with the directional uh, mark. And I could wrap a little ellipse around it this way. to represent where the two bones meet each other. The femur here, 
and the tibia down here. The other leg has a different direction. It's going more like this. And I can see that it's pointing this way, if, especially if I look at our landmark, the blue tape. So again, I might want to put a little ellipse here where the femur and the fibula meet each other, tibia meet each other. Now I'm going to darken some of my marks to show what's in front. As I do this, I'm trying to focus on directional marks that will show how the different parts of the body are oriented in space. What are they pointing at? Which direction are they going? So there's a simple sketch of the skeleton with my directional marks to help us to see which direction the different parts of the body are pointing in. 